Good morning, folks. It's a weather day here. Events, science, solar forcing of it. There are a number of stories to hit today and we'll begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star exceedingly quiet. Coronal hole turning away. Its solar wind should arrive at Earth tonight or tomorrow morning. No sunspots or solar flares. As we await the coronal hole solar wind, the telemetry is quiet. We're at low intensity geospace conditions and the magnetosphere is quiet too. One image to speak a thousand words here. This is major hail from Edmonton, definitely injurious, likely capable of killing you if it landed on your head. By the way, a cosmic ray future does mean more, bigger hail. Up next, six volcanoes discovered off the coast of Sicily and they've been hiding in plain sight. Very shallow. The scientists were shocked that they were right below their feet for eons and they never knew it. Let's come to the weather where Dr. Roy Spencer, professor, former NASA scientist, is well out ahead of the climate propaganda coming out this week. It was not the hottest month ever, likely the fourth hottest in 41 years according to the official data, and the Earth itself was a mix of hot and cold. The global temperature anomaly was about a third of what they claim global warming is total. This is linked below. Up next, we've got three articles on solar forcing. The first here shows the solar modulation of tree rings, which does have implications for precipitation, ultraviolet, and more. The atmospheric electric cloud ripples, they call them gravity waves for no good reason, it is just a name, but they do appear to be tied to solar activity in their large-scale oscillations. And finally, a paper describing minute details of a two-day oscillation in total electron content, most visible at the solar maximum periods. This is logical and expected given the increased modification potential of the sun over atmospheric electricity when sunspots and flare activity is high. Last but not least, when stars began to form, the first ones, they looked different than the stars we see today. They were much simpler, chemically, but after their booms and heavy element production, the following generations would never be the same. Well, they have discovered a star that is so iron deficient its progenitor nova must have been one of the first generations of stars in the universe. They have struggled mightily with the composition, and FYI, our star, the Sun, is well past third generation at least. We greatly appreciate your support. Ten days until the second infamentary comes out, the catastrophe cycle, micronova, magnetic reversal, and end of the world as we know it. That is likely to be the most exciting one we've got. We also have your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.